For more on this, I spoke not long ago with Matthew Akins from the New York Times. He's from Halifax, but he lives in Kabul right now and says he heard a telltale popping sound and knew it meant an explosion. So he got on a motorcycle and went to the airport. I caught up with him on a slightly unstable line in a deeply unstable place. It's a terrible thing to come across, and, I, and I'm wondering what struck you about it when you were there. Well, it's, it's just such a terrible place for something like this to happen because people were packed in like sardines. You know, they were cramming up to these gates, trying to get to soldiers, desperately show them some scrap of paper, their documents, their passports in the in the hopes of being let into the airport so they could be evacuated. So you imagine throwing a suicide blast in that mix, you're going to have a devastating number of casualties, which is what's happened today. Who is there to help people sort of medically and in that moment? Are there any foreign military on, on the ground still who, who are making themselves known at all? There's no foreign military outside the airport, but there is a, an NGO called Emergency, which provides free medical care. They're, they have a trauma hospital in Kabul, and that's where I went through the explosion and they were bringing in just ambulance after ambulance of uh, full of casualties, some of them little children. Uh, they, were, they were coming in the eyes of a very anxious crowd, relatives weeping on the sidelines. And have you seen or encountered any Canadians or any anyone with Canadian documentation or any status in Canada has just in the course of your reporting? I know I have friends who work for Canadian media organizations who are promised visas to Canada and who haven't made it out because the evacuation has been such a shambles and because it was so last minute. And, you know, I should I want to add actually that Canada's announcement, the, the very late announcement of 20,000 places for Afghans, which came at the final hour in, in a way that couldn't possibly be fulfilled in the timeless evacuation. I really think that was one of the key sparks for this kind of mass panic where you had tens of thousands of Afghans descending on the airport. I was hearing from people that Canada was going to airlift everyone. So the ways that countries just announce these kind of programs the last minute without any real possibility or plan to actually bring that number of people um, I think is partly responsible for the kind of chaos, panic, and ultimately death and suffering that we've been seeing at the airport. So Matthew Akins with New York Times in Kabul, that last point he made is one we will continue to discuss.